Hey, Matthias. Good morning from me. Good evening to you. Hello, Reed. Good morning. How are you? How are you doing? Um, doing really well. Very busy these days, uh, <laughs> uh, but I'm enjoying it. Yeah. I think this is the fourth or fifth, fourth time probably having you you back on. <laughs> I think um, fresh off the heels, uh, of course, of both of us uh, being at um, SQL Bits and mm -hmm. uh, very good uh, presentation between uh, yourself and uh, Gabi um, from uh, Germany. That was uh, some fun announcements with uh, Tim Dill. So happy to have you back on. And I do appreciate you um, reaching out to me, you know, six weeks, six to eight weeks ago. And basically just like, I can't talk much about the topic, but uh, we, sh we should arrange a live stream. And I'm, things keep going wrong. So I'm going to quickly reset my camera because it was flickering just a little bit. So that's going to pop back on. Okay, there we go. Better. Everything with Murphy has been going wrong today. So, um, but <laughs> I just, uh, I am yeah, appreciative of you, you reaching out and I'm happy to have you on to talk about uh, the, the Tim Dill language today. So I'm super excited to dive into that. I have a few questions queued up myself of things to ask and I'm sure the um, 37 and counting people on, on the chat are also going to be very interested in uh, both hearing about it and then uh, asking a lot of uh, questions as we go through the I, what I think is a very exciting new release for Power BI, certainly. Yeah, fantastic. Um, there was definitely a bit of a build up uh, all the way to SQL bits, which uh, uh, I partly <laughs> caused by putting some teasers out there. Um, and it was it's really, yeah, <laughs> really exciting. Um, uh, not revealing anything until the, the actual presentation there. So yeah. Um, in, in terms of coming coming on your channel, by the way, um, my very first uh, visit, if you will, was almost exactly 14 months ago now, uh, almost yeah, exactly yeah. to the day. Um, uh, I think it was the 27th if, uh, or maybe 29th, um, January last year. Uh, and we talked about PBI tools, which was uh, which had just uh, been released to the public. So uh, fantastic what all the things that have happened since. Yeah, I find honestly, I do. I'm trying to remember who uh, connected me with you. It, it was somebody else who mentioned like, "Hey, like, there's this individual Matthias who just released this like really cool, uh, like, thing for Power BI that that's great for." Uh, at the time, it was mostly like the version control um, and and auto um, auto backups between uh, you know GitHub and others. But since then, obviously, it has the ability to to extract a lot of useful information out of the model. Um, but do you remember who? You connected us, or is, is that something lost to time? Too, no, too much has happened since. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, uh, uh, yeah. Some some great friend, for sure. <laughs> exactly. Um, but I, I know there's a lot to cover today, so I, I think um, let, let's get into maybe having uh, you, for those not familiar, introduce yourself a little bit, and then uh, talk about the, the topic that we have at hand today. So let me go ahead and flip over to this for you, and I'll, I'll shrink my pictures down just a wee bit. There we go. Cool. Thanks very much. Um, so yeah, uh, for anyone who um, doesn't know me, um, just a few pointers here. Uh, Matthias Tierbach, I uh, head, head up the final systems team at uh, YouGov in London. Um, I'm a recent data platform MVP uh, and uh, have uh, spent uh, many years of my career as a software developer, software architect, always around Microsoft technologies. Ended up in in Microsoft BI and and Power BI um, a few years ago. And uh, th my big topic really is uh, enterprise uh, development patterns, uh, source control in particular, um, uh, automation, uh, data ops uh, deployments. Um, so this is um, where PBI Tools uh, has come from, which, which I mentioned earlier. And this is also very much where today's topic is linked to. Um, follow me on LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, check out my uh, repos on um, GitHub. The, the links are on the um, slide at the bottom. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, and so let's let's just move um, right along, if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. 
I'm, uh, I'm being lame here. I'm actually reusing the same slides um, we created uh, for, for SQL bits, um, if that's okay. Uh, we already put them out in the public domain in any case, so um, uh, I hope that's okay. And um, because of that, I also kept this slide in. So uh, Rui um, uh, obviously is not uh, presenting today, but uh, I, I do want to and have to um, mention him. Uh, Rui is the uh, PM on, on the Microsoft product team for Tyndall, for the uh, uh, language we're talking about today. Uh, uh, definitely known to many people in the community for uh, his uh, great technical contributions uh, before he joined Microsoft. Uh, he was on the uh, Power BI CAT team for a year or so and is actually now um, on the uh, product team. And um, uh, everything we're looking at today definitely wouldn't uh, wouldn't exist and wouldn't have been possible without him, you know, uh, wearing the PM hat and uh, making sure that uh, stuff gets managed to the finish line and uh, making sure that uh, we ultimately have really great documentation and, and all of that. So um, yeah, definitely wanna wanna use that opportunity. Um, and uh, so uh, no longer announcing things today because we did that a couple of weeks ago. But um, um, what we're looking at is a new uh, language, uh, including a whole new syntax as well. Um, and what we're targeting, um, well, what, what Microsoft calls Power BI Pro developers, right? So um, uh, just sort of setting expectations here and, and clarifying the audience as well. Um, so, you know, we're targeting people who, um, mm -hmm. let's say, are interested in, uh, in scalable, um, uh, automated processes, people um, who, who want to be able to use source control and CICD systems, um, people um, who want to look at uh, diffs and changes, uh, people uh, who want to have a code first approach, um, as opposed to um, people who are happy and, 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 and fine with just using graphical UIs and Power BI desktop, right? So uh, just to make that very clear, and um, if we're uh, following on from that, and if we're, if we're looking at where we've been with respect to model development uh, in for Power BI uh, and, and what we had regarding source control and being able to actually see changes between versions in a, in a granular way, we've had a, a JSON-based language uh, which um, uh, is called uh, Timsel, uh, Tabular Model Scripting Language, that was introduced uh, some years ago. And um, uh, that has had has introduced uh, many benefits when, when um, it uh, uh, c c came uh, out back in 2016 compared to where we were before. Um, but uh, there are also limitations, and and those limitations are basically what what we're addressing with uh, Timdal today. Um, so there are basically uh, three uh, main uh, areas where Timdal, which again is is a new language to define tabular models, um, has advantages. Uh, it's more readable. Um, you can see this here side by side. We've got uh, Jason Timsel on the left uh, and Timsel on the right. Um, it uh, is meant to be editable. So again, for uh, <laughs> pro developers who uh, are happy and and who want to be able to use text editors, um, you know, th this is uh, th this is where the um, language comes with many advantages. We can see that here already. Looking at a uh, complex DAX expression as an example, right? Um, uh, in trying to edit that one in a text editor in the JSON Timsel format is almost impossible. Um, and um, then the third one, uh, and this is really um, a, a key one as well. Uh, Timsel out of the box is one 
big, massive JSON file, which which can uh, lead uh, or which which can get you to thousands and thousands of lines of JSON. I've I've seen real world um, Timsel BIM files. Um, I'm not kidding. Uh, with more than thirty six thousand lines of code in them, right? Um, That's so. Right, yeah. <laughs> And uh, you know those are real complex enterprise uh, projects, but you know uh, it's it may be a bit of an extreme case, but you get the idea, right? Um, so the example we've got here, uh, I'm not sure whether. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. Yeah. So th there you th go. this example is um, is is a pretty box standard Contoso, right? So it there's nothing uh, majorly fancy going on in here, and you can tell. Just looking at the line numbers here, you know, we're easily in the thousands. Now, if we look over here, which is the exact same model, but actually broken down into multiple smaller units and, and sort of meaningful files, uh, we, we've got two digit line numbers. You know, we're, we're talking about dozens of lines rather than thousands. Um, makes a huge difference in terms of um, readability, in terms of structuring your project, but most importantly, also, when it comes to looking at changes and diffs, right? Um, so this is what we can see here. Um, all the advantages of um, um, Git source control, um, uh, looking at granular changes between versions, are, are really um, uh, 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 are really going to be um, possible here. And um, so previously, uh, there was one. Um, solution addressing this particular problem, which which is tabular editors save to folder option, uh, which is basically yeah. taking the JSON and and uh, breaks it breaks it out into into a folder structure, um, and we follow that approach. But now this comes straight from Microsoft um, as a standard format um, supported by any tool um, in in the Power BI tool chain not just tablet editor. Um, you, you no longer require, uh, um, uh, I mean, you uh, right, don't get me wrong. Anyone in the Power BI space absolutely should use tablet editor. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't do without, right? But uh, the, the point I'm trying to make is, um, in order to get those benefits, you no longer require um, sort of uh, uh, committing uh, to using a third party tool. Um, you get this straight out of the box. And um, uh, just moving on here. Um, uh, yeah, so uh, th that's a, a very small recap. Um, all the points I've made already. Um, it's hopefully a message as well uh, in terms of uh, uh, new investments coming out of the product team uh supporting what pro developers uh need and have been asking for for quite a long time well and the the thing that i mean just to continue to hit on is it's these are all official these will be officially supported things now so the file structure um or the being able to, to parse out into files for multi-authoring environments and everything related to that like the, the, these are all the game changing things that um i think your tool encourage them to probably look at this sooner and more closely than i i guess i i imagine that this, this eventually would have been the evolution of the product anyways but um and you haven't told me much about you know the whatever conversations you have but i i think i can just guess that there was probably a lot of very large companies that were using pbi tools uh enterprise customers that just kept asking microsoft like why do i have to use a third-party product to do this why is this not available natively on your platform um so I, I, I think it uh, it helped to uh, supercharge the evolution uh, faster of this than it probably would have happened. I, I guess this otherwise probably would have come out in another two to three years, um, but it would have been at a much slower development pace. So I'm glad to, to see that uh, clearly the community of support behind this was very strong to, to start to get the, those conversations of desktop hardening um, moving forward. And that actually just might be one thing for people tuning in, like, how would you describe NTS like the, because it's a phrase that's been thrown around a lot this year, like desktop hardening. Um, how would you describe that? Like, what, what does that mean for, for like a, a product like Power BI? Uh, just one technical note. I'm, I'm still looking at my own screen in Skype. Uh, uh, so right now that... your desktop's being shown. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay, right. Just wanted to make sure you're, you're aware. Um, 
So, uh, ah, there we go. Fantastic. Thanks. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, so, so desktop hardening is this keyword, right, that sort of came into the public domain um, last year at some point, uh, pretty much as an uh, as, as a catchphrase for lots of, let's say, investments and work that the product team needed to do, uh, you know, to, to address uh, pro developer needs. Um, what we're looking at today is very much part of that. Uh, but uh, it's only, well, it's, it's, it's an important step, but you know, uh, there are many more things necessary. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> it, it's a small, it's a small amount of, of, of stuff to come. Um, mm -hmm. Microsoft likes to say is soon. What mm -hmm. well, th things will happen and when soon. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, it, it, it's the, this is the snowball at the top of the hill that's going to slowly grow as it mm -hmm. go that way as it, as it continues to come down. Um, and we, we add more um, and more features to this. But you know, we, th th there are some um, scope limitations, and I do see a couple of questions from Greg. I'll get to, but the right now this is focusing on the model layout mm -hmm. uh, or the model schema um, that that's in, inside of the the PBX file. So like primarily, most of the data that's in a PBX file today is contained either with all the model information, which is going to be the, in the, um, the the model schema file, and then you have that report um, layout that is everything related to uh, the design of the pages, the the color themes, everything that goes into, um, you know, anything for bookmarks and all that other stuff. And as we, we've already seen, and I'll drop some links on there, there's already immediately advocacy for like, this is great, let's get let's get Tyndall for the report layer as well. So hopefully that's something that will also uh, move forward in this evolution of everything. But basically just everything inside of the file itself Hopefully, moving forward, we can get to that point where anything can be easily editable um, within the code without having to you know, basically dig into the raw JSON, which is really only designed for machines to read, not necessarily humans. Um, so I, I, I'm looking forward to seeing what what this is going to imply in the next you know six, twelve, or even twenty four months, um, as maybe other areas of the files get looked at. Um, mm -hmm. But I do think that. Uh, um, using Tableau Editor, there's also many ways that automations can be done uh, against uh, batch updates, things that, that hopefully will even allow um, stuff such as the like the, the best practices analyzer and Tableau Editor to be able to more easily um, apply updates to to the models or, or multiple ones. You know, have have tools that can that can audit and update uh, across tenants and be able to do. Uh, e easy updates to get rid of you know bad practices and, and employ best practices or certain configurations that you want to have as a company standard. Um, so yeah, absolutely right. This is limited to the model what we're talking about today, but clearly the mm -hmm. elephant in the room is what's happening to the report, right? Um, okay. So I, I'm not allowed to say much here, so uh, my apologies, but. Uh, um, you know, those voices have been heard, let's put it that way, right? Yeah. Uh, the product team is aware. Uh, and uh, if you have uh, if you were at SQL Bits or if you've seen the recording, which is also in the public domain now, um, Rui actually uh, did a little pre-recorded uh, uh, welcome uh, yeah. greeting, right? Uh, also introducing himself. Um, in uh, the PM role um, he's uh, taken up. And um, I can quote him, you know, he explicitly said, Tyndall is a first step. There are more things to come, dot, 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 right? So <laughs> exactly, exactly, yeah. Let's um, leave it here. There are, yeah, and like, and that's why with anything, um, especially as an MVP, I, I describe a lot of things with hopes and dreams. That's like it would be great if it, if this idea um, could become something some um, someday. So uh, I do want to bring up a couple of questions from from Greg, uh, who regarding native and out of the box comments. Uh, will there on that topic? Will there be any built in Power BI integration uh, examples such as exporting or importing Timdal from Power BI? programmatically putting Timdall into a PBIX without Power BI Desktop? Will there be any built-in 
Right. What I'm allowed to say <laughs> um, is it's on it's on the roadmap, but uh, there's no commitment with respect to any timelines. It's well, the, the Microsoft phrase of when soon. <laughs> yeah, sometime soon. And soon yeah. can be any, any length of time. Exactly. Uh, and then, oh, th this one's continued from his previous one. Uh, metadata only deployment to Power BI. Essentially, that's what Tabular Editor does. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, because you, you can edit and deploy, and, and Tabular Editor will have full support of, of mm -hmm. this to be able to uh, to edit, open, configure, and and individually or batch deploy mm -hmm. any changes uh, from this data into the service. Is the one requirement I think would, unfortunately, as the comments I've already mentioned, is premium would be required to, because the XML mm -hmm. input requires right. But at least premium per user is not that much of a extra mm -hmm. um cost versus you know uh, the minimum capacity of a thousand a month so right uh, uh, um yeah i'm looking i'm looking at the chat greg just clarified without xmla um uh, I don't, <laughs> uh there that's is, a microsoft question yeah yeah there, uh, there's nothing to be announced here uh, yeah yeah exactly I, I would i would similarly love, love the same thing um be, be able to, to do any kind of right to service uh I, the only thing I can ever imagine, and maybe just as a, as a vision, is it, uh, having them use something in the Azure portal to do right back. So you can't technically use external tools, but something that's integrated to Microsoft can still pass data between, say, Azure and Power BI, which is technically writing to like a pro workspace. Um, so that's one idea. Maybe that might happen um, someday. But uh, as far as I know, nothing's ever been announced or anything related to those. Uh, let's see. And then uh, Used had a, a great question as well. So uh, he hopes yeah, Tim Do will also report, yeah, to support the reporting parts. But um, would it have another uh, another lang uh, language or not? Could be. Everything we can say about that has already been said. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so just to, to clarify one more time, in case somebody missed it, uh, what does Tim Do stand for? What are the what are the letters? Uh, Timdal is the tabular model definition language, uh, yeah. and and that's very descriptive. That's precisely mm -hmm. what it does. It's a language to define metadata of tabular yep. models. And so exactly, so like TRDL would be the the tabular reporting um, descriptive language, if that mm -hmm. was ever something mm -hmm. that would come out. Um, there's a few questions that I'll I'll queue up that I know at least people were asking on LinkedIn and some others when we posted about this. So. Uh, this isn't. Uh, this will not be something that will replace DAX. It's not replacing Power Query. It's not changing or replacing any languages that the model itself uses. It is reading the the stored scripts uh, from all of that 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 construct the model itself into a user readable format. And and if at any point you want to show that again, the it makes copying both Power Query and DAX, uh, copying, editing, and adding any of those mm -hmm. really easy into mm -hmm. the. Um, um, into the model and i am i'm wondering maybe if you still have some of those up i know you did a couple of dives onto like how the how the tables looked and the columns mm -hmm. looked i don't know if they're if you had anything yeah, to pull up to, yes. to show a few of those yeah yeah um, uh, i mean if you're okay with that let's do some mm -hmm. demos and, and actually show Please. people what we're talking about here absolutely um, yeah um cool all right so uh, i'm still sharing my screen yes and i can pull it back up let me just uh, delete this. I was just testing something here. All right, here we go. Cool. Um, so Contoso uh, is what I've got here, because uh, why not? Uh, um, and uh, if I start off uh, with something that should be familiar to everyone, uh, I'm going to open a BIM file in Tablet Editor. Here we go. I've got Contoso.bim, and uh, that's a model with uh, ten table, uh, nine tables or so. Um, we've got uh, different types of tables. There's a day table here. We've got a uh, calculation group. Um, we've got another calculation group. Um, we've got uh, a, a um, uh, metadata table, uh, which 
uh, contains an M expression uh, like this over here. So that's a pattern which I personally always use in all my um, production data sets to basically inject uh, uh, environment information into my um, data sets. And um, then we've got standard stuff like customer, product, store. Uh, we've got a fact table uh, with, with a few simple DAX uh, measures. Um, so all pretty standard. Um, uh, we've got M uh, Power Query partitions uh, for each of our tables. Uh, we have some shared expressions here. Uh, for instance, um, to define a URL from which the sources are read. So uh, the um, data sources uh, here happen to be CSV files hosted on GitHub, just to make refresh, um, you know, uh, very effective. And then obviously we've got a few relationships as well, right? So, so that's what we have um, in terms of our model uh, with respect to tabular editor. And uh, if we look at this in the source code view, we've got our BIM file, which looks like this. And uh, we've seen some of the screenshots before. So yeah. again, right, uh, 2,100 lines. Uh, so this representation, whilst it contains everything that makes up the model, and whilst it is well-structured, is mm -hmm. not is is not great for reading for editing or uh, for uh, sort of collaborating in terms of merging and injecting things right uh, we've seen that already um i can go one step further and i can do save to folder and uh, i can uh, create a new folder here let's call it te as in tabular editor and then um extract that same model uh, and uh, here we go so now i've got uh, something slightly more manageable um where i basically have uh, a, a subfolder for each table that one contains partitions columns and every single column as you can see is a separate json file um each partition is a separate JSON file. Um, or just, just like, uh, just, the, like, just pause on a couple of these, just so we can mm -hmm. actually talk about like each. Like, mm -hmm. So go back to just one of the columns. Uh, mm -hmm. Just like pick, pick any of them. Yeah. The, the like essentially the like look at how easy and manageable uh, it you know, and I think you you can control the zoom a little little bit. I think on the the actual body of text in um, Visual Studio, right? Better. There you go. Okay, perfect, perfect. That's um, so like everything that you'd see in the properties pane in mm -hmm. the model view where you know you can basically choose the the data type the source all of that like it this is so much more manageable easy to like change the default summarization um mm -hmm. and even in the, the relationship section if you just to sh to show the parallel of one of those um for yeah like super easy to come into mm -hmm. here there there's a couple of of things where you know what you'll eventually have to learn like there's a few properties that i think aren't set like the you know enforcing referential integrity and a few others that if it's not applied, it just doesn't list it at all. Um, but I'm sure there'll eventually be a um, uh, documentation that will show every single like uh, applicable mm -hmm. property that you have to this. But I, I just love how mm -hmm. easy this is to to manage. And then I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people coming up with some good C sharp scripts for tabular editor that's going to e very easily be able to you know to update um, many of these properties. Uh, holistically for one model or mo multiple models um mm -hmm. you know like hiding keys as an example uh, things like that so mm -hmm. little small things that um that can be done super easily so I, mm -hmm. I just i love the readability of this and i just wanted to like to call out just how how easy it is for even the non-pro user because i know a lot of this described as like for expert developers but you don't have to really know how to write code at all to use this like it is mm -hmm. technically code but it is incredibly readable code so you add an extra line and you change a setting from you know true to false like there you go it, it's been changed mm -hmm. and, the, and it, it's uh, been updated in the model so i think this will be a gateway drug for a lot of people who are not wanting to uh who've been kind of avoiding touching like 
anything advanced with this stuff. I think this will make it a lot easier for people to kind of upgrade their skills without feeling like they need to take a course on, you know, how to you know, how to start using some of these advanced um, uh, external tools like BBI tools. Mm -hmm. um, so, so this is where we've been um, so far, and to. Uh, uh, again, uh, this is a solution that came uh, out of Tableau Editor uh, and was not supported by any other um, mm -hmm. tool in the Power BI ecosystem. And um, uh, as you, as I pointed out before, um, you know there there are some challenges here, particularly when it comes to looking at uh, DAX and M expressions. Yep. Right, uh, you can sort of see them, but. Mm, uh, you've got lots of escaping going on. You've got things broken out into arrays. Um, so uh, it's really designed for machines and computers rather than humans, right? Um, mm -hmm. And so th that's basically what, what Tyndall addresses. Uh, we've taken all the good things from this, uh, went a few steps further, and uh, most importantly, made sure that this is actually an out-of-the-box Microsoft-supported solution. So. Fast forward a little bit. If I now look at this exact same model in Tyndall, um, this is what I'm getting. Uh, we uh, again have um, uh, tables uh, in a folder structure. This time, however, um, every single table uh, consists of one file only. So if I go back to customers and to uh, take advantage of um, VS Code being able to uh, collapse mm -hmm, and expand mm -hmm. automatically. Uh, look at this. So uh, this is the Tyndall definition for yep, yep. Um, one table, 200 lines of code, including a bunch of columns, including a partition. Now, as we've seen in Tableau Editor before, this happens to be an M partition. So look at this. Um, I have M code here. If you've ever seen M code uh, in, in a Power Query editor, for instance, you know this is precisely what it looks like, right? Um, if I go back into my uh, UI for Tablet Editor and if I find customer partition, uh, here we go. Look at this. Uh, that's what it is, right? And the mm -hmm, Timnit mm -hmm. document contains uh, this with uh, same indentation, with same line breaks. With, with absolutely no escaping whatsoever. You can copy paste um, and it will be correct. Um, and um, the other points you made earlier, um, uh, you, you know, th this is almost uh, intuitive, right? Uh, I mean, obviously, yeah. uh, you, you, you got to know, uh, you know, the, the various keywords here, but then the idea is not necessarily that anyone would ever go into a, a notepad and and literally write an entire model uh, by hand. I mean, <laughs> that, that, that would be silly, right? Um, but do you want to start off, let's say in- There's one in person Tabula in the chat, I think <laughs> might try that. Right. So, but you, you would start off either with a model you've already got, uh, and then you iterate over it, right? Uh, and maybe you 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 want to make some small edits um, using you know um, find and replace um, features, or maybe you want to make some uh, a few edits um, uh, copying in uh, snippets from somewhere else, right? Uh, that's what this is designed for. Number one, and the second thing, you know, coming to the collaboration, let's say um, let's say. Uh, let's say um, someone added line three. I can show you how simple that is. There we go. I just do this. And assuming, obviously, my M uh, query returns uh, a column called line three, um, it could be as simple as this, right? Uh, I've just defined a new column. Um, the only thing I need to uh, care about is to make sure that all the column keywords have the exact same indentation, but that's not hard. If I now go into my source control view, look at this. That's what I'm getting, right? Um, very clean, very neat, very understandable. It's showing me that after line 32, my new column was inserted, right? And and that's um, that's exactly what Tyndall was designed for. Th those are Those are the benefits and the workflows. Um, people um, 
uh, want to be able to uh, take advantage of moving forward. So I have a couple of questions as we're getting into this. One, I just want to point out the like the, the, um, the PBI tools uh, feature that's in here is where it shows you the, the the person who updated it and whether or not the, the changes were committed. That little extra bit of code right there. Oh, the oh that one. Mm -hmm. This. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's not PBI tools. This is uh, this is a VS Code extension uh, called Git Lens, uh, which I absolutely. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's a free version of it and a premium version, uh, but the the free version, I think this feature is actually part of the free version. So absolutely love it. Uh, go and get it. Uh, uh, in fact, um, this entire source, uh, sorry, we're a bit off topic here, but uh, since it came up, so this entire source control panel um, out of the box actually only contains this bit here and all the other um, uh, 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 panels at the bottom, uh, they're all added by GitLens. Uh, so there we go. Uh, okay, they should excellent. Pay me some money. I have not actually <laughs> used that specifically, so I'm installing that. But I do have a couple of questions from the, the chat. Um, earlier, when you were showing some of the columns, a few of them were being highlighted orange. I believe that there was one of the, mm. one of the columns from the table view was, was orange versus yellow. Mm -hmm. So that was one of the questions that they yes. were wondering what that, that change uh, yes. was related to. Yeah, very good point. Um, because that's the other thing we announced. Um, there is going to be, uh, we should have a drum roll now, uh, there is going to be a dedicated uh, VS Code extension for Tyndall. Um, and uh, in fact, I'm, I'm running, a, you know, a, ver a very, very early alpha version of that right now, which is already giving me some benefits um, uh, with respect to um, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, syntax highlighting and some color coding, right? So uh, because this document has a .tmd extension, uh, which is basically the registered extension for the language, and because I've got um, Tyndall support installed in uh, in my VS Code, uh, it uh, it basically switches into t uh, uh, Tyndall language mode and then gives me all the benefits here. Um, so that's being worked on, and uh, most importantly, uh, the, uh, the VS Code extension is going to be released uh, as a, a community project on GitHub. Um, so we will um, invite and accept and and um, support community contributions to it. That's fantastic. Love it. And I also had one from Greg. He's been asking some great questions today. So let me pull that up right here. Will, does or will the Tyndall folder serialization allow for a finer grained structure similar to tabular editor's existing folder serialization? Uh, examples, file per column, file per measure. Great question, thanks very much. So, uh, what we get today um, is this. So basically, so here we go. Right. So, so th this is um, the structure we have today, where we basically have uh, entry level um, uh, properties and and settings regarding the model in a in a file called model.tmd, uh, where we've got all our shared expressions in a dedicated file, where we've got all our relationships in a dedicated file, where um, all model tables are showing up. Um, oopsie, wrong. Uh, shortcut um, are showing up in a table subfolder with one file per table and the same applies to cultures uh, roles and perspectives um, and uh, also data sources but that doesn't apply to power bi that only applies to as um, so that's what you get out of the box and that's what's going to ship um, in 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 public preview as well as um, uh, uh, for ga um, the team is already aware of uh, requirements uh, for this to be customized, uh, but that's currently not planned for GA. So that um, mm -hmm. may well happen later. Um, obviously, right, so we're going to start um, public preview very soon, like literally very soon, uh, not Microsoft soon. Um, and. Um, uh, it's all about making your voices heard, right? Uh, if there are certain things that uh, you uh, care about, particularly, make sure Rui in particular knows and, and is able to 
to pass on the message uh, that obviously may impact certain decisions. But for now, um, it is um, technically completely possible to customize the output, it, but it's not planned to actually ship that um, uh, uh, as part of GA. Okay, oh, awesome. Thank you for clarifying on that one. Um, also, the other thing to clarify uh, here. So, um, we're looking at uh, this file, which again um, defines our entire customer table, right? So let me let me just. Um, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, this is where I want to be. Uh, right. Um, again, uh, we've got partition here, columns. Uh, we don't have anything else. Um, let me let me go to a table that's a bit more interesting. Let's go to sales because that also um, contains some measures. Sorry, uh, here we go. Right. So here we've got one partition, uh, four measures, a few columns, and that's it. Um, now, in order to get the benefits I talked about earlier with respect to diffs and change tracking, um, we need to make sure that. Uh, between iterations, you know, basically when you make changes to a model and then serialize it out um, into the photo structure and do this over and over and over again, um, we don't introduce arbitrary diffs and arbitrary changes, right? And so for that reason, uh, Tyndall comes with a very strict standard order in which any of those elements are actually emitted. Um, and um, that ensures that the likelihood of um, uh, sort of technical changes being introduced um, only because of stuff being reordered is very low, right? Uh, so there's a standard order with respect to the uh, types of objects. Um, as you can see for tables, it's always partitions first, measures next, columns after that, and hierarchy uh, after columns. Mm -hmm. And then, and then w within those groups, um, uh, we're using strict alphabetic sorting. Um, uh, sorry, no, uh, that's not true at all. Uh, we're not using alphabetic sorting. Um, we are um, <laughs> uh, sorry. We, we are strictly retaining. Um, the in-memory order uh, of your model. Uh, so uh, de depending on how you created your model to begin with, you know, whether that came from desktop or from tablet editor, or even uh, from a Tyndall input to start with, um, w whenever the model uh, is read into memory, all those objects have a certain um, relative order, right? Uh, so for instance, currency key in this case would come um, before customer key. And uh, Tyndall guarantees that each time you serialize it back out, that order doesn't change. Um, okay, okay. And yeah, sorry. So not alphabetic. Uh, it's what, what, whatever you give it, that, that's what it is. <laughs> um, and um, that uh, currently, is not getting picked up by desktop. So in desktop, you may be familiar, right? Uh, uh, within any table, uh, you always get everything shown alphabetically uh, unless you use display folders, uh, in which case, um, uh, well, I mean, the display folders are still shown alphabetically, but at least you know, you, you've got a way to move columns around. Um, but theoretically, um, client tools could actually honor uh, you know, the, the order uh, you've given it. So this is sort of a potential desktop enhancement that may well happen at some point if there's enough demand. And there was a couple of other questions that I wanted to bring up. Um, let's see. So Jake had a question related. You can add comments to generate descriptions. Can mm -hmm. you also comment out code? A uh, good question. So let, let me just talk about the um, description piece first, because that's something um, I'm quite excited about. Uh, and um, is also something quite unique to Tyndall. Uh, so Tyndall has first class language support um, and actually first class syntax support um, for uh, objects within your model tree, right? Um, so for instance, column, um, 
uh, most of the objects in your tree support descriptions. Uh, and desktop and, and, and Power BI service actually uh, display those descriptions. Uh, so very useful for documentation purposes. Um, and um, Tyndall supports th this syntax uh, with three um, slash characters uh, in, or in order to define a description, uh, a description block. Uh, it can be one line, it can be any number of lines. Uh, if, you, if you put multiple lines here, the line break between uh, those is actually retained. Um, and um, if I go and look at uh, this one uh, in here, uh, customer, uh, sorry, I've forgotten now, what, what, which column was it? Uh, um, state, sorry. Uh, so if I go here, state, hover over, there we go. Uh, can you see that? So uh, I, I selected state, right? We can see that here. And mm -hmm. um, even Power BI service actually shows uh, the description. And uh, even Power BI service, as you can see, um, honors the line breaks I'm putting in there. So uh, that's just to keep, uh, to, to update everyone uh, on this. And again, this applies to yep. columns, measures, tables, hierarchies, hierarchy levels, um, expressions. Yeah, yeah, okay. So uh, uh, loads of um, object types do support descriptions, and again, sort of from a from an enterprise management point of view, it's highly recommended for you to to use them and then uh, to to feed that into your documentation. Uh, Mark's uh, modded documenter, for instance, is an external tool that would uh, then take advantage of of, the, of that metadata. Now, uh, long story short, <laughs> coming to Jake's questions. No, uh, you cannot comment anything out. Uh, we've had lengthy internal discussions about that, um, and uh, and had uh, um, ultimately decided that for now uh, there there is no source code commenting facility in Tyndall. Uh, so, uh, however, we absolutely expect that that may come up as community feedback. Um, and um, it may well be something that uh, flows into the spec uh, at some point down the line. For now, it's not possible. Um, and uh, if, if you if you if you need to add comments into your model, you have two facilities to do so. You can you can either put a model description in there, or uh, the other thing you can use annotations. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, and and then, sense. yeah, so we, uh, there are options. Excellent. And yeah, I mean, they're essentially like you can comment by adding the comments directly into the code in a in a in a in a identified function that allows it to basically be written directly into the model itself. Yeah. So let me just show you how easy this is. There we go. One, two, three. Uh, this table contains. Or customers. There we go. Right. Um, and that's how you add a comment. And uh, why don't I, because I've actually got, as you can see, uh, I've got an Azure Pipelines YAML file here. So I, I've got a deployment pipeline um, linked to this. Um, why don't I uh, go and, um, there we go. Uh, why don't I go? and uh, remove this because obviously I can't deploy this because I don't have address line three mm -hmm. coming from my M, right? So I don't wanna, don't wanna do something silly here. Um, but, um, well, in fact, you know what? Um, I, can, I can do it, uh, look at this. I can select this and I can say only stage my selected range, which now means um, this change, which adds my table uh, definition, is actually going into my Git uh, commit, whereas the other change is staying in my local copy, right? So just doing a little bit of Git uh, 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 um, how to here as well. So if I only commit this one, I say um, added uh, customer table description, oops, this uh, encryption. And then let me also create a new branch. Let's call it dev empty and then 
uh, read demo. Here we go. All right, so let me commit that. And if I then uh, go and publish this branch, it's going straight into Azure DevOps. And uh, there we go. If I then go to Azure DevOps, so this is my this is my repository. It's now telling me, there we go, there, there's a, a new branch uh, that's been created uh, with some new updates. Um, let me create a pull request. Um, that pull request would be, let's say, changes uh, from uh, 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 from read um, live stream. Why not? There we go. And typing is not my forte today. Uh, and uh, I'm saying uh, so. Once that pull request is completed, I want uh, the changes to go into the UAT environment. So okay. uh, I've um, uh, uh, wired up uh, the pipeline so that um, every time a pull request is updated or uh, created, um, uh, a deployment is automatically triggered. So we can see that some stuff is happening here, right? A deployment is automatically triggered. Um, to go into development. So this is a, a common enterprise uh, development pattern, um, something uh, I follow um, uh, in my team uh, with great success uh, in terms of, uh, you know, us having a consistent way of managing those kinds of projects. And we can see um, uh, those are actually the outputs uh, from PBI tools. And uh, we're already done. The whole thing took 13 seconds, uh, right? So uh, it's a tiny metadata change. Um, it, I didn't change any of my partitions, which means uh, none of the underlying data needed to be uh, refreshed. And so if I now go in here um, and refresh the view of uh, with my report and go into edit mode and hover over customer, there we go. Look at that. Um, so. Uh, Fantastic. This has just happened, you know, for me having having typed uh, this mm -hmm. extra line in VS Code, uh, uh, you know, creating creating a commit, pushing it up into Azure DevOps, and and now we've got it uh, in our dev um, version of our data set here. Uh, so you know, this end to end process where uh, small changes can actually be. Um, uh, performed uh, just doing some simple text edits, for instance. But most importantly, where you've got um, a really neat um, and granular uh, track record of what's changed, that you know, that's what we're aiming for here, and that's what uh, Timdil as a new um, metadata language has been designed for. So if I go back here and go to the pull request, and then um, look at the updates I've had. Um, there we go. So uh, th this is just a git ignore change I did earlier. We can ignore that. <laughs> but here, um, uh, right? So th this is uh, this is this is the one change I did to my model. Extremely easy to understand and um, make sense of. Yeah, and I mean, as you said, like this allows you to do simple um, changes without having to pretty much touch anything in, in Power BI desktop and do easy deployments and updates to the models with very light coding with three three lines of code that immediately added that to the report. So that's absolutely fantastic. Um, and it, using PBI tools doesn't take that much time at all. So lo loving it. Um, there are a few questions that I want to uh, pass back over. So sure. uh, yeah, let's see. Let's start with Greg had a great one. So if because descriptions have a maximum length um, I forget exactly. I think it's two. Uh, I think it's more than two fifty. But either way, what, whatever the limitation is, if you were to use uh, Visual Studio Code and uh, using Timdel, write something that is that goes past it. Would it uh, would it error? Would it truncate it? What would the result be? What would happen? Great question. Um, so, first of all, you know we started off from Timdel, right? Uh, and so let me let me just explain that too. Um, 
Tyndall is not replacing Tinsel, right? Uh, those, those are two different ways to represent model metadata, and they will continue, uh, and and they will they will exist side by side, right? Um, so let me. Uh, so number one, um, both of those models ultimately convert into an in-memory representation of um, uh, of, of our model metadata, right? And um, uh, that's ultimately what we need to understand. Um, so you can put all sorts of, let's say, garbage <laughs> into a JSON TIMSO file. Um, mm -hmm. If if you then want to read that into memory and, and convert it into uh, a tabular object uh, model um, uh, to deploy to a server, for instance, um, it will perform some validation at that point and will potentially um, reject some changes. And exactly the same applies to Timdo, right? Um, so uh, we uh, very explicitly uh, didn't introduce a new paradigm here or a new um, sort of uh, serialization pattern. Um, if, if, if you know how you get from a JSON BIM file you know, into into the engine, exactly the same applies when it comes to going from Tyndall into the engine. So, um, I think uh, th there are uh, there may be a 512 character length uh, limitation. I'm, don't quote me on that. Um, I, I know it can be pretty long because yes, I've, exactly. I've often um, I've often tried to uh, I've run some tabular letter descripts occasionally mm. when I do a connected data set. I, I will mm. take the the DAX code and put it in into the description, and it can take a large body of those. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's normally not until I hit like a Marco's calendar table or something that I that I run into limitation issues where it errors out because the code's too long. Um, mm -hmm. But like that, that that's good to know about the the results from that. Yeah. So basically. Um... Yes, there are limits, but those limits are not imposed by Timsel or Timdel. They're imposed by the engine and by the tabular object model. And um, uh, ultimately, this is going to be validated if you're trying to load it into, for instance, mm -hmm. tabular editor, or if you're trying to deploy it, uh, you know, using um, ALM toolkit or PPI tools. Um, but the the other point is, um, you know. I talked about the VS Code extension um, going open source and becoming a community project or a, a, a project with community contribution support. And um, uh, that is the space where if people want to have more um, sophisticated logic in their editor, it can be added, right? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that's precisely you know why we in, invite interested people um, to make contributions here because Frankly, there's a lot of potential in, you know, leveraging the power of VS Code as an editor, um, and um, uh, there are lots of, you know, strong uh, people out there with good ideas uh, who I'm sure can make some great contributions. So uh, things like that um, would be uh, would be good ideas because. Um, if if your editor already tells you, uh, you know what you entered here may be syntactically correct, but it's uh, semantically it's going to be a problem. If the editor can tell you that already, then you get really early uh, and quick feedback, and and don't have to wait till your deployment pipeline fails. Exactly, and there's a couple things that I want to pull up, which I think also leads into a great um, segue to also hopefully get some community votes uh, from from some people to uh, hopefully encourage more things to come from this but greg uh again with a really good questions uh today i like this half question half idea will there be an advanced editor pane in power bi desktop or in the service uh to view timbal of a table similar to power Query's advanced editor so like kind of along the idea of this like my, my vision is um like you've at least played around with uh, deneb you know what daniel marsh patrick makes so you know how like the custom visual has the left side of the screen shows you the code right side live changes of whatever the code is resulting in i would love to see something like that for power bi desktop for two things one tim Dull, make a change and you just the field pane just updates uh also with the report layer imagine you like you change the location of the the visual you change the color instant changes so you basically have code block uh you know rendering output of that uh, so like some version of power bi desktop would be uh fantastic for that i have a couple of votes that i have that i'm actually 
uh, working with Mike Carlo on. Um, he he has one vote for basically uh, Tim Dole for report layout. If you like the idea of something like that, please um, vote for the two things that I'm throwing in here on Power BI dot ideas. Votes really help Microsoft look at something like, oh, people want this. We should put money into this because everything costs money at the end of the day. Um, so that's thing number one. The other two just mentioned on the idea of desktop partnering that I would love to hopefully get some votes on to give people like Rui and others uh, ammunition to like, hey, people want this, let's make it, is that similar kind of like idea of a advanced Power BI desktop that lets you edit code. Wouldn't it be wonderful if in one one piece of software, we could have a data set open, we could have all live connected reports with it open in the same thing and the ability to basically edit a live report connected to the local model but we deploy them separately. We deploy the data set to the service. We deploy the report with a live connection back to it to the service. But basically, it completely separates the data set and the report from each other. But you still have one tool that manages both of them. Like those are the two ideas I'd love to get some support on. Um, kind of on the the idea of what Greg just mentioned. Um, but uh, what are your thoughts, kind of on that, like the the idea of a piece of software that kind of both has code and um, you know, viewed output at the same time within Power BI. I love it. It makes a lot of sense. Um, make sure, you know, uh, the the product team hears it. Yes, and uh, uh, and and they hear us by votes on Power mm -hmm. BI ideas. Like, please, please vote on the two things that I'm pointing here. One of them is that hot swap connection thing that I talked about with mm -hmm. the report data set. But the other big one is report the report dot layout. Timdle type language and and more advanced mm -hmm. features like that. So th your votes really help. So that's why I'm I'm soapboxing just a little bit is trying to get people to vote for that. They look at those numbers. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Uh, All right. Uh, cool. Any other questions? Give me one sec just to drop the other link to Mike's in here because I did one. Mm -hmm. Here is no, that's the it's a YouTube video and, he, and where's the link? Here it is. And this one will be for Mike. Carlos, 40, we, both of them are in the forties right now. Let's get these into the four hundreds, like lots and lots and lots of votes, double digit votes, please. 43 and 45 mm -hmm. respectively for ours, double digits, hopefully. So anybody watching, please take a, a couple of extra seconds to log into that. I know you have to sign into your Microsoft account and it's not, you can't just click a button, but this really does help uh, the product grow. Now back to questions related to uh, this stuff. We had a few others. Yes, John uh, Kursky, hopefully I'm pronouncing your last name correctly, had a great question on uh, any comments that you could disclose on if Timble could be used to describe a data flow instead of a JSON format. That's not in scope right now. I do just like the idea of like, if a, if a JSON file exists, hopefully there's a new readable formatting language that comes for it someday, you know, down the road. Mm -hmm. That seems like more of a three to you know, two to two to four year thing, not not a uh, not a six to mm. twelve month thing. Maybe may, may a few, but I I imagine that someday they will probably look at that as, hey, where else is there JSON within the Power BI tenant? Uh, but yeah, it, it's let's start small with the you know, Power mm -hmm. BI desktop first and move out from there. Voted for the ideas, wonderful. Thank you so much for the votes. If you don't mind, let me make let, let me talk about one more thing, uh, if that's Please. okay. Um, Absolutely. So you can see my screen here. Um, we've got the M partition here. And I just want to address one point that um, came up right after the SQL Bits um, uh, a presentation, uh, where there was also um, a concern uh, by some people that uh, uh, Tyndall would be very strict when it comes to um, indentation. And to some degree, that is correct. Uh, as I pointed out before, if you want to make sure that all these um, columns uh, are recognized as columns underneath this table, you do have to ensure that they all use the exact same in indentation level, right? Mm. Um, and in, yeah. in that respect, it's as strict as uh, YAML. However, there's one really, really important um, exception to that rule, and that's something which I'm very excited about, and I need people you know, to understand that. And that is, again, those embedded expressions, right? Uh, it, one of the key challenges uh, we have when it comes to defining tabular models is that we've got M and DAX all over the place mixed into other things like objects and properties, right? Um, mm -hmm. And so Tyndall, in order to, go, to do a good job, 
uh, needs to account for that, and it does. And so what we're looking at here is pretty formatted, right? Uh, it's uh, it's formatted um, uh, in 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 the way uh, well. It, this is the out of the box format you get. Uh, it's 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 meant to be uh, uh, readable. However, this is not required. Uh, what what you can do at liberty, you can completely change the indentation for for this expression, and uh, it will. Uh, uh, continue to be a valid Timda document. Uh, and uh, that is very important. Uh, so you can actually uh, copy paste DAX or M snippets. So you can make um, edits in here without um, uh, running a risk of uh, invalidating your document um, and so on and so forth. Uh, and uh, let me just uh, demo that um, just to really make that Please. point. Um, so if I, if I save that, um, and if I if I then use um, a new uh, well, it's not it's not it's not a new feature. Uh, if I then use a, a PBI tools feature, which actually allows me to convert back and forth between Tindal and Timsel, uh, so that feature itself is not new, but uh, Timsel support in PBI tools is new and will come out um, uh, when uh, Microsoft releases the the public preview, which again will be soon. Um, so, uh, if I do, um, if I do uh, PPI tools convert, uh, referencing my model folder, and then I'm specifying a BIM file uh, as an output, right? Here we go. Um, I get a new BIM file down here any second now. There we go. So, I've got a new BIM file, which is basically my entire model represented in uh, Timsel, right? So, if I now go and open that file in Tabular Editor, ooh, here we go, Contoso 2, and I go to Table Customer Partition. Look at this, right? This is uh, still exactly the same expression. In, in fact, um, the uh, trading white space we had on the left before always mm -hmm. gets chucked mm -hmm. off by default. So this is another Timnal feature. Um, so no matter which how 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 much you indent this, so let me just do another extreme example. Let me let me put it all the way here, right? Save, and then and then let's do just so you believe me. Let's do three. Um, <laughs> here we go. So brand new file, right? And now I open that one. Three uh, customer partition. There we go. Look at that, right? I've got arbitrary white space in my document. However, Tyndall is smart enough to detect that and to actually give me the most efficient representation of my model um, once it's uh, in memory and once um, Tablet Editor and other tools um, are working. So it's, it's really putting on like a, 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 a you know a, a window from the the mm -hmm. outermost mm -hmm. left inwards. Exactly. Um, exactly. Yeah. So it, it's the it's the equivalent in Power Query of like a. Uh, would that be tri trim? So, oops, yes, uh, it would be a trim. Uh, so basically, uh, this bit is detected yep. as shared yep. white space between all my expression lines. Um, and so this is then uh, basically thrown away. Um, and mm -hmm. uh, only everything to the right of it um, uh, loads into the model. That's that's a that's a very, very important and crucial Timnal feature. And it's uh, frankly one of the reasons why uh, we went through the trouble of inventing a new language um, rather than, uh, uh, you know, using anything that's already out there because we wouldn't have had, uh, we, you know, using YAML as an example, which would have been um, a, a sort of an obvious uh, alternative, uh, wouldn't have given us, you know, any of those sophisticated additional features. Mm -hmm. No, oh, that's fantastic. I it, like it. It's intelligent as well too to account for some. Mm -hmm variations in how people write the code uh, there was there's um there's one question that i did want to bring up uh from didier he who was not able to make it today but he uh he wanted to ask um you is uh what might uh be the the strongest benefits of tim Dole for self-service users in the long term he feels at the moment it looks very much connected to kind of the, the version control um so uh 
you know, for for the the, the non pro quote unquote de developer, where where could you see some best use cases for for this language um, as, as some possibilities? Hmm. I mean, to be fair, if you're never going to look at the source code of your model, frankly, you don't need to, do, right? Uh, uh, yeah. if, 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 if that's not something you care about, uh, if that's not something that matters in your workflow, um, I, yeah, I mean, I, I can't think of a reason um, why you would um, need to uh, in, invest in Timdo, that you know, that's what it's designed for. Uh, that's that's what the language does. If if you're happy to just work with a PPX file uh, um, and don't worry about uh, granular change tracking um, mm -hmm. or uh, the ability uh, to open things up in in a text editor, then it's it's not for you. And it's right, and it's not uh, required, unless. I'm missing something and, and you can think of a slightly better answer here. I think it's not necessarily going to be what they will connect to directly in this, but I do think there's going to be a lot more tools that will come out with this that will do like um, uh, diff diff management between those because mm -hmm. you can compare file by file uh, or mm -hmm. like section by section with a lot of these. So I, I do think that going forward, there's a lot of software out there that lets you just you pick two files and shows you the block of code between that. Um, I think that will be more manageable. So I, I think the other things that will come out from this will make the non will make it easier for the non-pro developer to consider pro-like features, which today it's it is a little more advanced to you know to, to look for change management and see like what line of code was was changed to change a title. Uh, well, that, that's report layer to change uh, to change a measure or a little bit of the M code. Also, just auto documentation again. Not something they'll do necessarily themselves, but I think there will be a lot more tools that will have like easy auto docs to extract all the power query or extract all the um, uh, all the DAX, but in kind of like a, a one button external tool, just thing that will just immediately do do this for you. Uh, mm -hmm. So I, I can see there's a lot of possibilities for the intermediate user, not in what they'll do directly, but in people making tools to have an easy button uh, mm -hmm. to give them more pro like features without having to become the pro themselves. That, mm -hmm. That's how I kind of envision mm -hmm. this. Maybe one idea. So let's say you are in a self-service world um, and at some point you need to bring a consultant in because you have a really hard problem to solve, right? Um, <laughs> um, uh, or uh, you, you just require for things to be taken to the next level, right? Uh, mm -hmm. That consultant what's the first thing they're going to do? They, they want to see your models, right? Uh, and they're going to want to see this, right? Um, so yep. uh, uh, that's definitely the very first thing I would want to look at uh, to learn about what what do you have? You know, what does your model look like? Uh, uh, what measures, what what M queries do you have in there? Um, and uh, uh, I personally would always absolutely prefer, you know, to have a, a clean, uh, you know, code view as opposed to moving around uh, probably a desktop, for instance. Oh, and one big thing for this is one last little, like, I just had an idea for takeaway is, so so the, the large reason that I um, I technically have PBIT files or I, I have a, a PBIX with a calendar table that's already been generated in there, because if you create a new, uh, a new table in a file, you unfortunately have to, yeah, you need the query, then it has to be loaded. You have to sort the columns. You have to hide the columns. You have to set it as a date table. Like there's all of these things that you have to go through. Everything in here is already included. You get the query, you get the table properties. So you can lift and shift shared tables between workbooks really easily without having it to you know, have extra PBXs or PBITs. And it will take all of the properties, both in the after load and before load and immediately puts it into there. Um, which is just one one copy property. So I think that's going to be really useful to 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 migrate specific tables uh, between models with everything else that's been auto applied. So yeah. Um, and just one more view here, right? Mm -hmm. um, calculation groups. Um, uh, just want to make sure folks see that too. Very clean, very neat syntax. Uh, you can imagine moving around calculation items, uh, inserting new ones, changing 
um, uh, uh, DAX formulas, right? Yeah. Um, there we go. One last question, and I think we'll we'll start to wrap up. But uh, Vermont G had a question related to thick report. So, how would Timdal fit into a thick report? What's shown here in the demo is, seems to be just for thin reports. Looking for version control for thick reports. So, I mean, I'm assuming that's the you know the the PBX with the report and model included the same thing versus report and model separate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it's ultimately, you know. <laughs> It's, it's the elephant in the room, right? As we said uh, an hour ago, um, the, uh, <laughs> this, this, this requires us having a, a similar model for reports. Um, and I, yeah, I, I, I wish I could, but I, I just, I can't say anything. Um, if, I, if, I, if I was a betting man, like I would just assume that this, like, this is just gonna be an evolution. We're, we're, we're starting with the model and I'm sure there's a lot of eyes that are on the report. And uh, uh, pretty much anything else that's still codified today. And how do we make that more uh, easy to, you know, to use tabular and all this uh, sorts of other stuff? So it it is the the snowball at the top of the hill, and we'll 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 leave it at that. Mm -hmm. Yep. All Indeed. the time being run via PBI tools. Uh, yep. So no, I I mean I'm sure we can continue to ask questions for for hours, but this has been fantastic. Um, I'm really happy the you know again this this has come out and I just the amount of hours that i'm sure you probably spent with microsoft in the, in the last what eight ten months you know probably uh, maybe a little longer uh seven actually seven 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 yeah. months so they, i'm sure there's been a lot of time dedicated to to helping this grow so i'm i i appreciate that you managed to light the fire under this and and uh and help them create the vision uh or or get the get get the product to market basically for this so um Huge, huge like you know uh thank you for the, the community support on this for sure oh and and looks like some upcoming power bi producers please yeah absolutely yeah uh, it, give, give a it, plug for this i know there's a few tickets left yes if you don't if you don't mind right um so power bi cruise is coming up uh in just under a month um mm -hmm. and uh i'm gonna do a deep dive three hour session in the afternoon all the way to dinner <laughs> um on Tyndall. um and uh, it's going to be very hands-on. So uh, th this is not going to be a three-hour lecture at all. This is this is interested people bringing their laptops and actually learning the stuff end-to-end, uh, uh, -end, uh, really uh, diving deep in uh, what the language looks like, uh, what the uh, tooling uh, uh, does, uh, how, how to ultimately um, plumb it in, you know, into your ecosystem. I can promise yeah. that at that point, um, there will be bits available and, and tools, you know, there, there lots of things are happening behind the scenes right now. So this is um, Power BI Cruise, April 24 to 26, um, which happens on a boat, a very unique. We probably never had a Power BI conference on a boat. Um, super looking forward to that. Uh, you can still get tickets, um, lots of other, uh, a, a cool, well-known presenters and 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 uh, great topics, and the boat goes from Copenhagen to Oslo and back. It also includes um, a sightseeing morning in Oslo. Um, many reasons not to miss this. This looks, yeah, like I, if this was not so close to the end of um, the MVP uh, summit and everything else, and also sequel bits, I would have been definitely coming to this one. But there's a great I'm out of presenters and like the idea of power bi on a cruise is pretty cool uh for for sure so like i i, I don't think it, any conference that i've heard of has really done that before certainly not in tech so uh used is not on the call anymore but uh, kudos to to use and um as gear for for putting this on great idea and yeah three hour deep dive session into into the uh, timdo language um on this so i'm sure you'll have a blast uh going between uh it's leaving from Copenhagen to, to Oslo and then back, yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, if, um, let me put the link into here, maybe a cruise for anybody who wants to consider. I think there's maybe, I know uh, uh, last weekend there was about 10 tickets left, so there's probably somewhere between 5 to 10, I think, remaining. If anybody's interested in that, please consider signing up. But Thank you. Matthias, yeah, with, uh, with that, I do want to thank you so much for coming on. Um, I'm sure I will probably in the next six to 12 months have a 
really good opportunity to have you back on again as many other cool things that are getting announced for uh, the evolution of Power BI. Um, and hopefully you have a great time on the Power BI cruise. So I, um, otherwise, I, remind me, are you going to be in, in, in Redmond at all in the next month, uh, month at all? No, no, unfortunately okay. not. Um, I'll probably see you later in the fall then. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, it's been a blast. Thank you so much. Uh, I think we uh, ran over quite a bit, but uh, fantastic oh, questions. Yeah. Really, really enjoy, you know, the, the engagement. Um, and um, everyone can be sure you'll hear loads more from me regarding Tyndall moving forward. Uh, the next thing to come is public preview uh, with you being able to actually uh, get the first set of tools supporting Tyndall and being able to try things out on your own. Uh, that is soon, uh, trust me. Perfect, and I look forward to that. Um, with that then, yeah, enjoy the rest of your day and everyone, thanks for tuning in on this. And Friday, actually, uh, as Gear, who's one of the two for PBI, a Power BI crew, is that he'll, he'll be on doing a stream with me as well. So I will see you all then. Bye. Thank you so much for watching. Please consider hitting that like and subscribe button. And if you want to help support this channel, take a look at our channel memberships or our merchandise store for cool swag. And last but not least, please consider sharing this video on your social media platform of choice to help our channel grow. So, until next time.